Hello everyone, Gilly here. Tonight I wanna to show you how to make an open source contribution to a project in GitHub. Now, first things first, it's good to have a particular project in mind. The project I'm gonna be working on is F-Sharp Data JSON Validation, which is an F-Sharp project maintained by my company, which actually I'm an owner of, which means I can just make changes to it directly. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go through the motions of not being an owner. I'm gonna pretend that I'm a new contributor just joining the project for the first time, wanting to make some cool changes. So the first thing you should do when you get into a project and you, you want to make a contribution is see if there's any contributing docs. Sometimes in the files, in the root, there'll be a contributing.md file. You should definitely read that if there is one. Sometimes there's just a little blip in the readme, like here it says, contributions are welcome, feel free to open issues, submit PRs, fork, etc. You'll find that different projects on GitHub have different degrees of how much rigor they require and process. This one's pretty loose, uh, so let's just get to it. But before we do, if the project has a code of conduct, you'll want to read that to make sure you're not going to anger anyone who's working on the project. Or um, if the project has a contributor license agreement, you may want to read that before you actually make a contribution. Because those license agreements, sometimes you'll find you don't want to sign them and your contribution is just not useful until you sign it, or they won't merge it until you sign it. So if you don't know where to start on a project, the best place in my mind is in the Issues tab. Uh, the Issues tab contains a lot of things that have been opened by folks that people just want to see changed about the project, or they want to see new features added, or they want to see bugs fixed. It's just the general bucket of all the things that they want done for the project. Now, if you're looking for places to start, sometimes there'll be tags that make it useful and helpful and easy to see what needs to be done. So for example, in this project, there's help wanted and up for grabs. And those are kind of just indicating to folks, you know, um, these are good first contributions. Also notice there's this little thing down here that says for this particular project, anytime and 1.1.0. These are what GitHub calls milestones. And basically they represent versions of the actual project that you're working on. You really want to look at those before you make a contribution so that you can kind of target what's next on the developer's radar. The, you know, they've already done a lot of work maintaining their project and they kind of have fleshed out what they expect to see in the next version. If they even use that, some projects are much more loose. So anyways, the actual contribution I'm going to target or the issue I'm going to target tonight is this one, which is add more any combinators. You notice it doesn't have extremely useful docs with it. That's actually me right there. If you wanted to, you can always ask questions here. I recommend it. If you don't know what something means on anything in GitHub, you can pretty much ask a question or ask for advice or ask for help, um, which is pretty cool. It's a very open, very social way to make contributions to open source. So the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to fork the project. Now what forking does is it makes an entire copy of the repository for you. It's your own personal copy. And you can use that as sort of a sandbox to make any kind of changes you might want to make. And then later, once you like your changes and you want them to go into the main line, or maybe you don't even, you can um, get those merged back in through what are called pull requests or PRs. But we'll get to that later. So first I'm gonna fork this project. If you're a part of an organization, I'm part of a few, um, you'll see them listed here, but you also see your private account, which I'm just gonna to fork to my private account. This will take a moment. All right, there we go. So there, boom, voila, my very own copy of the F-Sharp Data JSON validation repository. Exactly the same as the one that's out there, mind you. So once you've got it forked, uh, you'll want to clone it. So you can just copy the link here. I use command line pretty much exclusively for this stuff. Of course, if you're using Git extensions or the GitHub plugin, that's fine too. Whatever works for you. So I'm just going to clone it down and then I'm going to CD into the directory and there you go. I've got my very own copy of the GitHub repository in which I can do work. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check out a new branch. This branch is going to contain all of the changes that I want to make as part of this pull request or as part of this change. So let's go back to the issue really quick. Uh, make more any combinators. This is what I want to do. I'll just say add more any combinators. All right, excellent. 
At this point, you'll want to go back to your contributing guide and hopefully it'll have some useful information on how to build the project, run the tasks, all the different things you might need to do as a developer for the project. So in order to not bore you with the actual changes, I'm going to make those in a separate video and then I'll come back and we can talk about what to do after you've made the changes. So I've just about finished up the code changes. I've made sure the tests pass, the code builds, all that good stuff. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna commit my changes. So I'm gonna do a git add, I'm just gonna do a dash A. If you're not familiar with these, you may wanna look up what they mean. Um, I'm gonna do git status, because I am pretty much addicted to typing git status, apparently. And then I'm gonna do a git commit. I'm gonna open up my favorite editor. Now, different projects may have different ways that they want you to structure the commit message. This project doesn't have anything in particular or any particular way. However, I know that it's kind of nice in GitHub, at least. You can say the number, you can say resolves, or resolve number 10. That will actually signal to GitHub that if this thing gets merged, it will finish off. It'll, it'll complete this issue. It'll call this issue done, which is kind of cool. And it'll automatically link it to the issue as well. So it's useful to put a useful message, add um, any object and, oh, add any object and any array um, combinators. It's useful to use the language of the issue. That way you're, you're sure you're talking in terms that the maintainers will understand. So um, basically I just saved my commit there. Now you wanna push your commit up. Excellent. And then once your commit's up, you should be able to open a PR. So I made that commit, of course, inside my own private copy of the repository. That would be here. And when you do that, GitHub will see you pushed it and it'll say, hey, I noticed you pushed this. Do you want to open a PR? This makes it super easy. I'll usually just click right here. And then basically it's gonna ask, where do you want this PR to go? So I want it to go into the original repository, which is matrix solutions after beta, blah, 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 um, into master, which is master is the current primary branch here. And it's coming from my private repository. That's what the second part means. Now this will not actually be in the git commit or in the git history, but it's useful sometimes to add some comments here. Like for instance, if you are, making a UI change to something, you might want to submit an image of the change so that people can understand what's going on. Sometimes there's a little layout here, like description, and they expect you to put a, a short little description of your change, add some more combinators, da da da. Anyways, this project doesn't have one of those sections, but some do, you'll, you'll notice when you see it. So I'm gonna create a pull request, and that's really the last part to making an open source contribution in GitHub. Um, you'll notice if you go back to the issue, because I numbered it, it's now linked to in here, which is neat. But what happens next is the actual maintainers of the project will go in and they'll see your pull request in this list and they'll review your code. They'll look over all the changes you made and make sure you, you did the right thing according to their contrib contributing guideline. And if they like it, they'll merge it right in usually. And if not, they might ask that you change something. Like if I were a maintainer right now, I might say, whoops, you forgot to add documentation. Just to make sure you're abiding by their contributing guidelines or to make sure that your stuff matches what they want. And usually people are pretty gracious at this point and getting your stuff through and they like to see new contributors as well. So that's about it to making an open source contribution in GitHub. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope this video was useful to you.